Hi, I'm Tasha from fitnessblender.com and today I've got your quick single weight upper body circuit workout. That circuit is five exercises, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off, two rounds. We have a one minute finisher at the end as well. For equipment today, make sure you have some options. It's only one weight at a time, but make sure you have something light, medium, and heavy. A mat is also a good idea if you need a sound barrier for snatches at the end of the workout. I'll show you a few modifications along the way. Warm up and cool down are both included. Let's go and get started with warm up. Warm up is four minutes, four exercises, 30 seconds per exercise, no rest between exercises, and we'll go through two rounds. We get started in 10 seconds with arm circles. Taking those feet about hip distance apart, a little bend in the knees, tension in the torso, arms coming forward to start. So we're just gonna go through a freestyle motion, one arm at a time. So yes, torso will shift side to side, but try not to go willy nilly. We're not noodly here. It's intentional movement. We're going to take it backwards. Pause here. Opening up the chest along the way. So I know first round of arm circles, you might hear some creaking and cracking. It's okay. We have to do it again. Squat with overhead press next. Widen out your stance. A little bit wider than hip distance. Palms face. Sink it into your squat. Press overhead while in the squat and then stand up back to start. Sink it down, press, release, stand. Get that deep breath going. I know it's an upper body workout and sometimes we don't sweat as much. We're not as cardiovascularly strained, but we still have to focus on the breath. Hinge reverse fly, coming up. Get that hinge going first, so palms face on those arms, hinge, squeeze, retract the shoulder blades, stand up nice and tall. Feel a nice lengthen in those hamstrings, pull, release, and stand. So we get the lower body involved as well because even though it is upper body, everything is always working together. We also have snatches at the end, and have also lower body. Edge of your space. Inchworm, keep those knees relatively straight. Come on out, raise the right arm first, palm faces the ground, then left, walk it back. You determine how much you need to bend those knees, especially since we are at the start of the workout. Left first. Try to keep the hips square to the ground. Bring it back. Breathe. Looks like we can kind of get a part of one. Back at the top, our arm circles taken forwards. Maybe a little quicker this round. Starting to feel a little heat building throughout the chest, shoulders, core. Backwards. I'm starting to sweat. I'm like right on the precipice of sweating, like it, the bead is forming. Squat overhead press, palm space again, press and release. So from the side, we can see top of head, base of spine, nice straight line and arms just follow that same line. If that's too much, you can always do your overhead press when you're standing up in your squat. It's a little less tension and difficulty. Hinge reverse fly. Stepping those feet together and loop the hips again. Hinge, pull, release, stand up. Imagine you're stamping the floor with your chest. Head is just a natural extension of your spine. So you shouldn't have to do much to see me. And if you need to, try to just gaze mostly out of your peripheral vision. We have our inchworm with forward raises. Find the edge of your space one last time. Let's start with our left arm first. Pause, raise, raise, bring it back. You can always drop to those knees if necessary before you go into your raises. Let's get one more in. 
I know buzzer's done. Finish your rep though. And walk it back. Nicely done. Let's get into the first round of our five exercise circuit. 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. We're gonna start with low row. I'm starting with my heavy-ish for me, 20 pounds, 9.1 kilograms for that low row handoff. So you're gonna be alternating arms here, passing the weight from one arm to the next. We start in less than 10 seconds. Get that hinge going just like we just did in warm up. Except we got a little weight now. Palm space, hinge, low row on the right, pass it over to the left. Whatever arm doesn't have the weight can make a fist just to create some tension. It helps you keep your chest and shoulders squared off to the ground, forces you to engage the core. So that's why I said in warm up, we train lower body and get the lower body warm as well because everything is working in tandem. It's amazing how tension in one part of the body can force tension in another. Draw that weight up towards your hip, elbow to ceiling, so it's up and slightly back, pulling through shoulder blades, upper back muscles. Nicely done, our quick 15 seconds. I'm gonna lower to my 15 pounds, 6.8 kilograms. We're gonna stay on the right side to start, alternating between neutral grip overhead press and military. A little bend in the knees, palm faces first, pull it down, pause here, open it up, your military press. Bring it back in, palm faces you, and then palm faces out. Breathe, keep tension through your core, keep bend in your knees. Your option here, you can stick with any one of these variations. You can lower the weight. You can take breaks. Try to exhale on the work. Inhale on the way down. We're just gonna switch arms. Let's see what happens on this left side for me. This is where things get, you know, colorful. We're just gonna say colorful. Rack that weight, same deal. Palm faces in, our little pause, faces out for that crack. I don't even know what joint that came from. We're still good though, it didn't hurt. So you can tell, my left side gets a little wonky to pay so much more attention and that's okay. But I got my fist on my right, Keeping tension in my core. You need a little break in between. Yeah, you can rest that weight on your shoulder, but that also depends on the shape of your weight. I understand that, I know. Oh my goodness. All right, we have lateral raises. It's another handoff. I'm gonna go down to 12 pounds, 5.4 kilograms. We'll start in the right side. A little bend in the knees, you're going to pass that weight along the front. Elbow bent, palm places the floor, raise it to the side, pass it to the left. Weight's coming up about shoulder height. Try not to go above. I don't know why. When I set this up last night, I was like, I'm going to go to 12. Usually I do 10, especially if it's first thing in the morning. But stage hand Tasha was like, you got this. Let's put out the 12. Less than 10. Brace the core. You can do a kickstand if you need to here. I find switching back and forth. Both feet's easier. Okay, rotating biceps curls. We're gonna start on the right side only. We'll get the left next round, don't worry. Here's where a kickstand might help you. So palm faces and then palm up. Slow and controlled, elbow stays close to your side, but not digging into your rib cage. You wanna focus on your biceps doing the work, not so much the shoulders, they assist a little bit. That was a knee pop. Cranky knees in the morning. 
If you prefer to take out that rotation, you can keep it palms up. You can even, if you want to, keep it as a hammer. Neutral grip the whole way. The rotational curl, a little bit of both. It's a combo. Get both heads of the bicep in one move. Finish that rep and release. That's it for round one. You get a quick water break. I'll meet you back here for round two. Welcome back from your first water break, jumping right into round two of our five exercise circuit, that low row handoff. We start in 10 seconds. I'm keeping my 20 pounds. Feels good, my 9.1 kilograms. I'm just gonna stay with it. Hinge and row. Elbow up towards ceiling, weight towards the waist, hand it off. We have to do a little bit of core work during this routine as well. Sneaky, right? That's what's keeping your chest and shoulders, hips, all squared off in the same direction. This is a very short routine. But if you lift heavy enough and challenge yourself, you can get a lot of work packed into a short amount of time. So close. Get one more rep in. Lovely. Switching back to my 15 pounds, 6.8 kilograms for that overhead press. We're going to start on the right side. Neutral grip, military. We alternate. Feels so good in this arm. Like, go right arm. You're amazing. The key is to have those kind words for the left side when it comes up challenge myself to be nice to that side. It's trying just as hard. I keep the shoulder engaged the entire time, so notice I never drop all the way down. We're here. I know, it's a long 45 seconds. Brace that core. Little tuck of the tailbone. Make sure everything's turned on. Five whole seconds. One more. Oh, belt it that round. Okay, switching to the left side. Kind words. I have to remind myself of that. You got this. Rack it up. Same deal. Neutral. Pause. Open. And press. Look at you go, left side. You're so amazing. You shake and wobble along the way. I know you're working. And you made it to halfway. So did you. Trying to watch my ribcage flare. I know, I do it a lot on this side. So it's just a lot harder. Keep it set. One more neutral. Yeah. Thank goodness. Okay, going back down to my 12 pounds, 5.4 kilograms. For those lateral raises, you can start left if you want to. That's totally fine. You don't always have to start on the right side. I just like setting it up on that side. It sends the communication to this arm of what we're doing. So I'm raising out to the side with that bent elbow but my arm's still slightly forward or completely lateral. So I'm not all the way out here. Look at that. We're already more than halfway through. Then we have our rotating biceps curls. And then we're done with our second round. Finish it out. Oh, I can get one more. Ah, a burned. Left side gets it this time for our curls. Back up to 15 for me. 
for now. We know this arm. It's got some, some issues. Rotate that curl. Curl it up and down. So neutral, supinate. Just means palms up. That burns. Got my little fist going. I'm like, help me out. You can kickstand. You can kickstand either way. So there's not really a rule here as to which leg you want to keep planted. I just offer some recommendations. Base it on what helps you the most. Less than 10. Come on, arm. You got this. We'll do one more. Let me show you. Ah, relax. Weight to the side. Time for your quick second water break. And then we come back for your one minute finisher, which involves jumping jacks and snatches. Welcome back from that second water break. We have our one minute finisher. It's one move, it's a combination move. Three jumping jacks and then one snatch or high pull. I'm gonna give that to you as an option. So you can either do the full press to ceiling or high pulls up and slightly back. I might do a little bit of both. Let's just get going, you're gonna alternate, okay? We got 10 seconds to go, we start with our jacks. You can always tap it out, take out that hop. I'm going to start with snatches and then we'll see where we go from there. Here you go. Three quick jacks. I'm going to start with my right. Arm close. Punch to ceiling. Put it down. Three jacks again. Now it's my left side. Punch and down. So I've got my mat underneath my weight just to catch it because I have neighbors below me. Driving the heart rate up, remember. So the only time we do this, this is our only time focused on power and cardio for this workout. High pull, up and slightly back. Drop the hips, get into that squat position every time you grab that weight. One more. Finish it. Nicely done. That was it. Walking around your space. You can put your weights away. We're going to cool down. Breathe it out. Take your victory lap. Just moving my mat because I don't need it. Wave to the people. Tell them thank you for watching you and your fitness endeavor. That was beautiful. Lovely, lovely job. Keep breathing. Get your heart rate down. I'm just resetting the clock so we can go into our cool down and I can just stay accountable for keeping you on time. Cool down, it's about four minutes, about 30 seconds per stretch. Keep breathing deeply in through the nose, out through the mouth. We're gonna start with shoulder rolls. Fix your pants if you're like me and you want them fixed. Here we go, feet underneath hips, shoulders up and forwards, drawing them up to the ears and down. Might be still a little out of breath, it's okay. Be intentional about slowing that breath down. Pause here, take them up and back. And then that one minute finisher is also a great benchmark. When you come back to this workout, can you beat your total amount of reps? Can you go up and wait? We'll see, right? And pause. Take that right arm across the body, grab above or below that elbow, gently pull it across, shoulder down and away from the ear. If that feels good to you, you can gaze over that right shoulder, get a little extra stretch throughout the neck and the cervical spine. You can turn it the other way. Do what feels good for you. Release, we're just gonna switch arms. Left arm comes across. That's the cool thing about warm-ups and cool downs. We have very generalized movement patterns that work for the majority of the population. 
But you yourself, knowing your body, can intuitively know this is what feels good. So if you need to stay in a particular stretch or a particular dynamic introductory movement, stay in that movement. You know that that's what your body needs for the day. For no hard rules. And release. Let's stretch out the neck and traps on the right side. So take that right arm, place it behind you in the lower back. Left arm comes up for assistance to gently draw left ear towards left shoulder. You should feel a nice stretch, elongation all the way along the neck, down through the traps. Our only hard fast rule for warm up and cool down is it shouldn't be injurious. Warm up is preparation, cool down is preparation as well. It's preparation to return to your day. Gently release. Let's just switch. Left arm behind you. Push that shoulder down. Right arm for the assistance. So if your cool down still involves you hopping around with a really high heart rate, then your body is not being prepped to return to a state of homeostasis. You just prolonged your workout. And release, let it go. Going between our chest opener and hugging the tree. So you press the chest in between those shoulders. And then when you hug the tree, hollow out the belly, round out the spine, chin to chest, reverse. I like to rock back and forth, heel to toe. It just keeps me on rhythm. Next move, spinal roll down, just a little massage for the spine. I'll turn to the side, just so you can see. Keep that gentle bend of the knees. You're just gonna trace those arms down the front of the legs. Spine, nice and limber. Letting the head hang in between those shoulders. Feel a stretch and tighten the hamstrings. Keep the spot rounded. And then slowly come back up. Let's do one more. I just felt so good. And then gently come back up. Just a little massage. One more move to massage that spine. Keep those fit feet about hip width, or they can be a little wider. Just gonna take it to a gentle spinal twist. So arms can be out in front of you, twisting side to side. If you feel good, keep the feet planted. And then last but not least, arms nice and long. We're slowing down the momentum, taking it back to the playground. We did this because it intuitively felt good and it still feels good. A couple more swings, slow the momentum down naturally, and then we come back center. Let's take a deep breath. Inhale, reach up to the ceiling or the sky, and then exhale. Let it all out. Give yourselves a hand, clap for yourselves. I know it was a short workout, but it's a lot of work compressed into a short amount of time. Once again, my name is Tasha. I thank you so much for joining me and I hope I get to see you again soon. Workout complete.